Hi everyone! In this video, I'm going to show you how to make a boiler suit in Rhino and Grasshoppers. This is a great project for beginners. At the end of this lesson, you will have a better understanding of data tree, split tree, split mask, basic surface creation, and it's really easy to do. So if you're ready to learn, then let's get started. To begin with, we will draw a rectangle using the rectangle corner to corner command. You just need to select the command and put two dots on the Rhino canvas. Let's turn this rectangle into a surface by extruding it. I will drag the sphere icon in the Z direction of the gumball to do so. Let's open a grasshopper and bring this geometry into it. That's where the magic happens. First, I'll put the prep container into canvas and set the previous geometry we created. Then, you can hide by hitting Ctrl plus H. A single surface is required to create a rectangular panel on each side. In order to do so, I use Deconstruct Brett component. This will give me each four sides separately. One, two, three, and four. A rectangular grid can be created by using a rectangular panel component. By connecting the number slider to U and V, we can control the number of panels. The dimension component allows us to determine the lengths of the surfaces in the U and V directions. Let's examine the U values. Some of them have higher values. In order to use them as a U division, I will divide those values by another number. This will result in the longest side getting a higher division number. Making a wavy curve on top of these panels is the next phase. Once more, I'll add a deconstruct prep component which will give us the face, edge, and vertices of each panel. Let's take a look at those vertices by connecting to the param viewer component. I will eliminate the empty branches by simplifying the tree structure. All right, currently there are four items in each of the 66 branches of this data structure. This indicates that there were 66 faces and each with four vertices. To visualize the order of the vertices, I use point list component. Here some of the vertices are placed in the same position, so I will scale them toward the center of each panel. This will move those vertices toward the center of the surface they belong to. I use the average component to get the center of each four sets of points. Later we remove this scaling part. Next, we select the vertices in this order. Take this to be the first surface, for argument's sake. From this surface, we will choose the vertices with the index numbers 0 and 2, whereas on the following surface, we will choose the vertices with the index numbers 1 and 3. After appling this rule to the entire panel, we will move them in normal direction relative to the panels. In order to implement this rule, split trees come in handy in this situation. Let's quickly go over how to use the split tree component. It enables us to choose a section of a tree or divide it into two. The tree can be divided using a string mask that determines the positive output of your tree. The remaining portion is referred to as the negative tree. Here are some general rules. The mask for the tree branches should be included in curly brackets and separated by semicolons. For the items, use square brackets. If you want to select every option, you can omit or use a question mark. You can use a sequence of numbers by placing orders like this. Now let's apply this rule. From the first level of branch, I will select all of the possible outcomes. But on the second level, I will select all even branches. Here are the item. I will select 0 and 2. 
This indicates that we will choose items that have index numbers 0 and 2 from the first panel, then go on to the third panel and choose the same items. This sequence will apply to all. I will add another split mask rule to select odd trees and items. Now let's move those points into the normal direction of the panel they belong to. To get the normal direction of the panels, I use a combination of his planner and deconstruct plane components. The Z output can be used as the normal direction of the panel. The amplitude component is used here to increase the magnitude of the normal vector. We no longer use the previous scaling setup, so I will remove it and use the combined data component to combine the positive and negative output of split tree component. The next step is to make a blending curve between each consecutive point in each branch. There are four points in each, so we can make four-sided curve. I use Bezier to make those curves. Let's see the order of the points once more. If we shift the order by one, the second one becomes the first, and the first one becomes the last, and so on. By using those two sets of order, we can create a Bezier curve in between consecutive items. The tangent curve will be the edges we get from deconstruct rep component. The following step is to create a surface that can fit those weighty curves. To do that, I use a component called surface from the edge. This takes four inputs. I use a list item and raise the output to four in order to receive each Bezier curve in different branches. Let's take a look at Bezier output. Here we have four items in each branch. This means when this pass through the list item component, they will distribute according to their order. The first curve passes through output I, the second through the output plus one, then so on. And now we can use those four output for surface from edge component. The next phase is to generate a new surface that can fit this gap. To begin with, let's ensure that each edge has a similar wave pattern. Let's take a look at the output of the divide component. I will convert those numeric values into integers. Next, convert the odd numbers into evens by adding one. I use this expression to perform that. This mean we divide each number by two, and if the remaining equals one which signifies the number is odd, we add one to it. Otherwise, we keep the original value.
All the odd numbers have been changed to even numbers, so we can use this for the U division. This way, we get both edges with the same wave pattern. Now let's fill this gap. First, we must extract all the edges located at the corner. Then, we can construct a surface by revolving. Let's inspect our surface data structure. Here we have 72 branches, and I will remove the last two outermost branches. This will result in four branches, as the base geometry we imported from Rhino has four side reps. By using the list item component, select all surfaces in the first column of each side. To get the indices, I will create a series of numbers. The counts will be the V division that we set before. After choosing the surface, use the Explode Curve component to extract all curve segments. You may be wondering why we use the Explode Curve on the surface. The answer is that the Explode Curve automatically extracts the boundary edges and explodes them. This gives us four items in the branch, so chose one out of four by using the List Item component. Here we extract all corner edges. The next step is to make an axis and revolve around it. We can extract the axis from the first geometry we imported from Rhino. Using Brep Edge component extracts the interior edge. Here we are not sure about the orders of the curves that match to the axis. Plus to that, we have different branches, so we arrange them in a way that have the same data structure in order. First, find the midpoint of both sets of curves, then using the closest point component, we can find the closest point index. By using list item, we can reorder the lists and also we can get the same data structure. Since both sets of curves have the same data structure, we can use the revolution component. For degree input, we must provide the domain of revolution in radians. I will set it from minus half pi to zero. This means a 90 degree revolution.
Now let's go back and move the negative outputs in the normal direction to the panel. This gives us a round edge. Thanks for watching. You can check out my Patreon page for the Grasshopper script files, access all project files, and support the channel by doing so.